Hi, I'm Tony Bowen, and welcome to part five of my monthly series of my Cato E8 build that I'm working on. If you tuned in last month, you saw the locomotive was very much still in the white primer stage, and it was just getting ready to go to basically the, the paint shop, which was my next step that I did. And to the I, it looks like it is close to completion, and it is certainly getting there. However, there were a few detail parts that I personally left off until it had gotten painted. And of course, some decals that I was waiting on, you know, they tend to show up after I've started some of the decaling, but didn't have them all here. So like this one here that has basically the EMD, E unit, NEF unit um, series. These are great for putting in like the back background for number boards. Um, it has a lot of extra letters, some builder plate things and that. And of course, they can easily be added. So let me kind of show you where the engine is right now. And then uh, you'll get a little look at the process of how it got there over the last month. So a just quick look at the locomotive. Um, it's painted in um, Rock Island maroon paint. The trucks have been painted silver. The fuel tank modification now has been painted in black. Um, it has the Plano um, grills on it. You can kind of see some of the lift rings at the top, um, the different horn, firecracker antennas, the um, grab iron or grabs on the top of the railing. And then, of course, coming down from the cab, the service door and the ends, just a real light kind of um, touch up with um, some paint there. Um, same with kind of on the catwalk there. And then of course the steps also matching the um, locomotive trucks. In the front, I'll just slide this back a little bit. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it a whole lot. In the front, I touched up the wipers a little bit and then um, it has the double seal beam um, headlights but no lenses yet. And then just a little added touch. I didn't um, light these, but even the little marker lights, just that little dot there. And of course now having the decals, I'll be able to put the number board decals in and then um, also number it. And so uh, how did I get to this step? Well, stay tuned and the photos that you will see will show you how I got there. To start off with, I referred back to my picture of the 649 and looking at the twin seal beam headlight. The Rock Island did not seem to have a consistency of whether those headlights stayed horizontal or vertical. So I just referred back to my photo and put them in that way. I won't lie to you, putting in the twin seal beam headlights is not an easy task. It's a very small area. But let's face it, this is end scale. Everything about it seems to be small. I have found that kind of putting glue on the inside of the shell works really well. And then just kind of laying the twin seal beam headlight in that glue and then giving a little adjustment to putting it in its correct orientation and then just letting it dry. After the top or upper headlight is done, then I come back and I do the lower headlight. The lower headlight is even a little trickier because obviously the twin seal beam um, lens that will go in there is even smaller than the upper headlight. Having both lenses, the upper and lower, in place, now I felt it was time to get ready to airbrush the locomotive. The other detail parts could definitely be added after the painting process. All right, for airbrushing, um, I have just a small air compressor I picked up a few years ago at a local Menards, which is, which is kind of a Midwest um, hardware store. Um, it was on sale after Christmas for, I think it was like $80, normally like $110. Uh, nice thing I like about this is it doesn't walk. And what I mean by that is when I turn it on, it doesn't like vibrate and move around. So that's a nice thing because when you're airbrushing, the last thing you want to have is, you know, something else under your feet moving away or pulling the uh, cord of your airbrush around. Um, so I use this, it's got regular regulators on it 
And, you know, a lot of times it's a personal preference. A lot of times people will ask me, hey, what pounds per square inch or PSI do you use for airbrushing? And it, it really is not one set. For me, it really depends what I was painting with. You know, many years ago when I was able to use Flow Quill, I was airbrushing that at a different PSI than I am some of the water-based paints that um, are available today. So it really depends what kind of paint you're using. In addition, I uh, have my own little airbrush toolbox. Actually, one of my daughters made this for me a couple years ago when they were in middle school um, shop class. And I got it for a, a Christmas gift and I thought, you know what? It works great for keeping my airbrush su supplies. So I've got extra hoses in there, I've got some rags, I've got some bottles and that. And then um, my airbrush itself, I keep in there too. And I've got a couple different airbrushes. Um, I've got a Pache with the double action in that. Um, this one here is a Pache that is just a single action. Um, it's very comparable to um, a Badger single action in that. And if I'm doing one solid color, which this unit is, it really does a nice job. It has a nice needle to it, um, good flow. And so uh, some people might say, oh, you need to have that big expensive airbrush in that. And I found that, you know, this one here was, I believe, $27 or something like that. And um, I know sometimes you can get them much cheaper. Um, once in a while, Michaels or Hobby Lobby will have them. Um, but uh, it does a great job for single. As a matter of fact, I use this one to paint the majority of my track, um, Rail Brown. And when it was just basically feeding bottles of rail brown paint to the track, this thing did a great job. I could just go boom, boom, boom. And, you know, next thing I know, I've got 100 feet of track painted and no clogs or anything like that. So anyway, just some of the airbrushing supplies. The other thing that's nice with this hose here is that it already has um, the adapter on the end. So it can go right into my air compressor. So there's no other... Um, adapters that I needed. I could just literally feed it on here and it fits right into the um, socket on the end. For um, this project of my e-unit I'm going to use the uh, True Color paint and it is Rock Island Maroon and I've only used this a couple different times. A friend of mine that lives out in Colorado I painted a couple Rock Island um, Jeep 7s for him a few years ago that were maroon with the yellow ends. And uh, the one thing I could say at the time when I used this paint is I couldn't believe how thin it was. Um, it didn't cover uh, up a lot of the details and things like that, which were great. Or sometimes you can get some paints that um, they go on a little heavy or that, and all of a sudden a lot of your details are lost in that. So, I mean, this literally went on like water and um, dried rather quickly. The only downfall I will say with this paint is I've noticed once it's opened and it's been used, boy, it doesn't take long and all of a sudden it either sets up and gets hard and uh, is unusable within a couple months or it starts to get kind of that gumminess, uh, rubberiness to it. Um, but that's the only complaints that I've ever basically would say with this paint. So... Um, I did try some true scale paint like this before when it came to painting my rails. I will say it does not, or my experience was, it does not stick well to uh, track. And so I don't know if it is just because it is that rubberiness and it doesn't bond very good to rails. When I tried to use this for uh, weathering the track using a uh, rail brown, it just did not stick very well at all. Or maybe it's a case I try to clean my track um, too soon after I painted it, but I let it cure for about three days. And when I went to clean it, it just kind of rubbed right off the rail. So, But for plastic models, I found this um, to work really well. Even though this is pretty much a water-based paint or has the consistency of water, good rule of thumb is always still make sure you just kind of stir it up real well make sure there's no clumps anything in there that is going to uh, 
run up and clog your um, uh, airbrush gun. That definitely slows down the whole process of airbrushing. Or the last thing you want to have is to be airbrushing and have a nice even flow and all of a sudden there's this splatter of stuff that comes out of your airbrush gun. So always stirring it up is just a good, good rule of thumb to do. So when it comes to painting, um, I usually try to group any other projects I might have. So obviously I have my E8 that I'm working on that's getting painted the maroon. But I also have a Jeep 7 that is going to get painted maroon also. And it's just simple that uh, once I have everything set up and the paint going that uh, any projects I have... Um, I, I tend to save them so I can just paint them all at once. And so that's what I'm doing today. So they'll quickly get primed with the True Scale Primer, which will just be gray, and then they'll go right into the uh, Rock Island Maroon. The original plan was to go to a friend of mine that lives in Cedar Rapids to use his uh, airbrush um, booth and uh, with us being under quarantine, that just did not work. So we had a nice 70 degree day. Um, I had a cardboard box, um, kind of an old school method that um, I set up as my airbrush booth. A lot of times I've been able to put a furnace filter in the back. However, I did not have one of those, but I just sprayed it simply in the garage. Um, using a cardboard box and the air compressor and airbrush um, needed about two good thorough coats um, gave it about a 20 minute drying time and then came back and reshot some areas that still looked a little thin and then uh, let it dry overnight after the shell had dried overnight I came back and basically highlighted the shell with the areas that would be um, either stainless steel or painted in silver. Um, so most of the grabs got painted, the steps um, painted the inside of the uh, center seal um, or twin seal beam headlights and um, basically just let it set there at that point before I started the decaling process. I used a variety of different decals from Microscale and also some from Steve Heil that makes Rock Island decals. Um, I started with the nose striping and then got more into putting the heralds on the nose and on both sides of the cab doors. Um, I did not have the EMD, E unit, and F unit decals for the number boards and um, the builder plates. So I put an order on those and basically those are decals I have to wait on. At this point I've gone as far as I can with the locomotive until I get my additional decals. I separated the shell from the chassis, painting the trucks of the locomotive silver and pulling the modified fuel tank off and painting it a flat black. To the locomotive car body, I installed the Plano um, intake grills along the side, and on the back of the locomotive, I put on the American Limited oper operating diaphragm. So after watching that, you might say, okay, what is there left to do? Well, just a few key things that still need to be done. Obviously, a train line hose in the front. The couplers need to also be installed. The mirrors on both sides need to be installed. And then on the back of the locomotive, obviously a few um, airline hoses and just train line hoses that need to be installed. So it's getting pretty close to being finished up, but those are just a few of the detail parts that still need to be added. Along with still, if you notice, there's no window glazing yet on the sides or in the cab. That needs to be installed. And then Cato, with their little plastic parts that they have on the inside that happen to line up with the windows and that. I like to go through and paint those black. And then the one thing I will also do when the shell is off again is back behind the uh, twin seal beam headlight, I will also paint kind of the whole nose um, black. That way it really concentrates that light to come out that headlight 
and not hopefully shine up through any parts of the nose of the locomotive. So I hope you enjoyed this month's installment of my progress build of my Cato E8. When I started this in January, my plan was to have it wrapped up by June, and it certainly looks like that is going to be the case. However, I feel a little sad because my plan all along was, once this was done in June, to be able to take it to the N-Scale Convention in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, it just so happens we found out this past month that that convention for this year has been canceled. So, I guess that means wherever the 2021 convention will be, if I'm lucky enough to get to go, looks like I'll have a locomotive already done for the contest room, and that might give me the chance to work on another project for next year. So, until I see you next month on my progress build, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in June. Take care. Bye-bye.